Hello and welcome to Arirang News Break, live from Seoul, I'm Han Daen. We'll begin with the suicide of Latte Group's vice chairman, Yi in won What we know so far is that he hanged himself on a tree on the day he was due to be questioned by prosecutors as part of an ongoing probe into the group's irregularities. He left a handwritten four-page will saying the so-called secret slush fund does not exist. Let's get further details from our Kim Hye-sung at the News Center. Hye-sung, so there seems to be some delay with the police briefing. And to find the exact cause of Lotte Group Vice Chairman Lee's death, police officers have decided to do an autopsy and do a briefing later today. His body was found on the ground by a passerby at around 7.10 a.m. local time, two hours after she was scheduled to be questioned at the Seoul Central District Prosecutor's Office as a suspect. Police say it looks like he hanged himself from a tree using a necktie. Lee's handwritten will was found in his car near the walking trail. In the four-page letter to his family and Lotte Group employees, he said, I'm sorry for leaving early at this difficult time. The so-called secret slush fund does not exist. The 69-year-old was Lotte Group chairman Shin Dong-bin's right-hand man. Since joining the company in 1973, he held key positions in the policy coordination or the control tower of the group, making decisions on investments as well as mergers and acquisitions. Prosecutors believe Lee, along with Lotte Group President Hwang Gak-kyu and Head of External Relations Cho jin Tae, who were summoned yesterday and August 15th respectively, are three key members involved in the group's embezzlement and the creation of multi-million dollar slush funds. Soon after news of Lee's suicide broke, prosecutors released a statement saying they were saddened by his death and would re- reschedule the investigation accordingly. High-level officials at Lotte Group are discussing follow-up measures and there are expectations Lee's suicide will slow down the wide-reaching probe into the group's irregularities. Back to you, Tangen. Thank you, Hesong, for that. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has reportedly ordered his military to build new submarines that can carry two to three ballistic missiles. North Korea's current fleet of ballistic missile submarines can only carry one missile each, according to weapons experts. The Japanese daily Tokyo Shimbun, citing sources familiar with North Korea, reported Friday that Kim specifically demanded the new submarine be built by September 9th of 2018 to mark the 70th anniversary of the North Korean government's founding. The report also said Pyongyang appears to be developing new submarines that can carry more missiles based on technology obtained by disassembling a 3,000-ton submarine the regime purchased from the Soviet Union decades ago. To mark the anniversary of the nation's Innovation Center network, Korea has kicked off a festival celebrating the startup movement. While noting their achievements, President Park also suggested new tasks that will enable the centers to take a leading role on the global stage. Presidential Office correspondent Song Ji-sun has the story. Korea's Innovation Centers are the backbone of President Park's creative economy drive providing one-stop services for new startups and helping them enter overseas markets. Less than a year since the nation's 17 centers were launched, the network has supported over 2,800 startups and small-sized companies while attracting over $250 million in investment. President Park Geun-hye on Friday opened a festival highlighting all of the achievements these centers have accomplished over the past year. In her remarks, she said the innovation centers, which have led the way in fostering startups in Korea, must now act as a platform for sharing best practices and creating synergy among different regions and across resources. Startups nurtured at these centers have debuted on the international stage at places like the Mobile World Congress and have also received support from foreign accelerators. The system has also been exported to South America and the Middle East as a model of an innovative economy.
President Buck also said that to link the startup movement to job creation, these centers must work as platforms for employment, matching emerging startups with qualified personnel in cooperation with regional schools and businesses. Song Ji-sun, Arirang News. Korea's consumer sentiment hit an eight-month high in August, despite lingering concerns about the government's corporate restructuring drive. The Bank of Korea says the consumer sentiment index came in at 102 this month, up one point from July. A reading above 100 means optimists outnumber pessimists. The monthly index reflects consumers' outlook on the economy, their living conditions, and future spending plans. The uptick follows S&P's decision to upgrade Korea's credit rating from AA- minus to AA and the government's supplementary budget plan. That's all for now. Stay tuned for more top stories here on Arirang. Thank you for watching.